Now, I, what I want to do is a simple exercise where we would like to compare the capacitor model and the, the diffuse double A model. Okay. So, this is what we had derived earlier that is d psi by d x is equal to del star delta psi divided by delta is equal to sigma star divided by epsilon naught epsilon r okay, where delta psi is the, the potential drop between the plates. Okay. Now, I would like to take you know the psi is equal to psi naught exponent minus kappa x and d square psi by d x square is equal to minus rho star divided by epsilon right. These were the this was the basic equation that we used for obtaining how the potential varies with separation distance right that is the right. Now, I would like to use these expressions and then express this in a way I can compare with uh, the capacitor model. Okay. So, for that what we will do is okay. so, I have written an expression here okay, which tells you the sigma star which is the, the surface charge density okay, which is the, the surface charge density that we had in the capacitor model right and this rho star is the the charge density but that is charge per unit volume right in this case okay right now if you assume okay if you assume that the, i don't have any other added electrolyte i only have the charges because of the i only have the counter ions that come because of the dissociation of charges on the particle surface. Okay. Then what I can do is I can say that because of the electro neutrality okay, I can say that the charge density okay, at the two phases must be equal. When I say two phases one I am talking about the charged surface at the two phases okay this is not two phase two phases okay because of the electro neutrality the charge density in the two phases must be equal when i say two phases one is the charged surface and the counter ion subface okay the other way of saying the same thing would be so the total charge okay the total charge contained in a volume element of a solution across you know so um, let me put it this way okay let's let's say this okay so i can define sigma star right then what you do is i consider the total charge that is contained in a volume element okay and i am going to count all the ions that are present from the wall to a infinite distance away from the wall okay the total charge that is contained okay det determined in that way must be exactly equal to the charges on the particle surface however they should be opposite in sign. Is that okay? So we are talking about in this case. So imagine that now I have a diffuse double layer now. Okay. We'll come back. I'll, I'll ask. Okay. When one of the phase contains diffuse layer, that means this is a charged surface. Okay. And I have a a diffuse layer. When one of the phase contains diffuse layer the total charge contained in a volume element of a solution across the cross section okay, extending from wall to infinity must contain the same amount of charge 
although opposite in sign as the unit area of the wall contains. Okay. Yeah, so that is what this expression essentially tells you. Yeah, you have a question. Yeah, so so yeah, that's a good point. So sigma star corresponds to the the charge density of the surface. Okay, if I have a charge surface, okay. So we what we defined is sigma star was Q divided by A, right? The total charge on the particle surface divided by area. That's how it was defined. Okay, and in this case, rho star is a charge in the solution. So we are we are talking about equating the charges on the particle surface and the charges in solution okay and because of the fact that the electron neutrality you know should, must be preserved the total charges that are in the solution on the on the particle surface should be same as the charges in the solution however they should be of opposite sign okay and I think a little bit about this I mean, you know we can we can discuss this further as well so now so, I have rho star, I can instead of sigma star, I, instead of rho star, what I can do is I know that rho star divided by epsilon okay, is minus is d square psi by d x square. Right? So, I am going to replace for that instead of rho star, I am going to have d psi by d x and I am going to have epsilon that comes here and there is a minus 1 minus here minus here it becomes plus right. So, therefore, sigma star is epsilon 0 to infinity d square psi by d x square into d x okay. and I would have to sum up all the charges all the way from distance is equal to 0 to infinite. Right. Therefore, sigma star if I integrate this I can write this as sigma star is equal to epsilon into d psi by d x at infinity minus d psi by d x at 0 okay, that is at the surface of the charged body okay, and that is at a, a distance very far away from the, the charged surface. Okay. And we know that we know that d psi by d x at infinity is going to be 0 because we know that psi itself is 0 at you know x is equal to infinity. Therefore, the first term is going to be 0 then you are left with epsilon times 0 minus d psi by d x at 0. Therefore, sigma star is minus epsilon d psi by d x 0 and because we know that the potential varies you know falls in you know in an exponential way I can get what is d psi by d x at 0. Therefore, d psi by d x at 0 will be <coughs> psi naught exponent minus kappa x times minus k right is it okay. And because for x tending to 0, this term becomes 1. So, I have minus k times psi naught. Okay, therefore, sigma star which is equal to minus epsilon d psi by d x at 0 will be equal to epsilon kappa psi naught. Okay. And therefore, I can rearrange this to get sigma star is equal to epsilon into psi naught divided by kappa inverse and if you look at the capacitor model the expression was sigma star is equal to epsilon delta psi naught divided by delta. Okay. So, we are able to express sigma star you know uh, obtained from the d bay Huckel approximation in a in a is an equation which is analogous to the capacitor model. Okay. Okay. So, what you can infer from this is the, the these results uh, they essentially show that the diffuse double layer at low potential um, you know you can think about it behaves like a uh, you know cap capacitor model. Okay. However, the separation distance uh, is replaced by k inverse right instead of delta you have kappa inverse, um, but of course, it this model captures the the you know some really important features. For example, uh, the distance over which 
significant potential exist decrease with increase in the electrolyte concentration. Okay. Uh, what I mean by that if I look at this expression what do you understand by this statement? The distance at which the significant potential exist decrease with electrolyte concentration right. So, if I look at these expression okay, uh, of course, the potential if I go to a very far away distance potential is going to be 0 right. Now, what is important when you worry about electrical double layer, layer interaction is that when the two surfaces charge surfaces come closer if the potential okay, when they approach if the potential is very very high that means, the repulsion is also going to be higher right. So, if I look at a particular okay, let us look at this potential okay, which is okay, this, this potential right, it occurs at maybe separation distance of 10 nanometer. Okay. Let us go back and look at a same potential occurs at a much lower separation distance okay, the same potential occurs at maybe something like whatever 3.5 nanometer or something like that. Now, if I go here the same potential occurs at even lesser separation distance okay. that is what the first statement essentially means. The distance over which significant potential exist decreases with increase in the electrolyte concentration right that was actually demonstrated by here right because this is a, a case where the electrolyte concentration is changing right the electrolyte concentration is changing when the electrolyte concentration is 0 0.001 that is a particular potential occurs at 10 nanometer but the same potential occurs at a, a lower distance when I have a higher concentration of salt if I go for even higher concentration of salt the the, the distance at which the same potential exists even decreases right that is the first statement the distance over which significant potential exists decreases with increasing electrolyte concentration and the second point the range of electrostatic potential decreases as the valency of the ions in the solution increases. This is right that that you can draw that from the second point sorry. Can I make another I am going to read that again okay. The range of electrostatic potential the range of electrostatic potential decreases as the valency of the ions in the solution increases. So, there I mean now you have a, a statement about the range of interaction. Okay. Now, the range of interaction uh, electrical double layer interaction essentially depends on how does this potential vary with distance. Okay. If the potential falls off steeply okay, the range over which the electrical double layer interactions become important is smaller. Okay. However, if you have a case where the potential decreases more gradually that means, the range over which the electrical double layer interactions are important is a is, is a, or, or the electrostatic interaction become important over a, a larger range of separation distance. Do you get that point or, or do you have to explain? 1 by k is the range over which Yeah, so you can think about I, I, yeah you can in a way think about k inverse or 1 over k as a, a distance over which the electrical double layer interactions are, are become important right. If you go by that okay, so the more the kappa inverse is more would be the range right. Now, because I am able to decrease kappa inverse by adding a higher concentration of salt or by increasing the valency of the ions that I have put in therefore, kappa inverse is going to go down therefore, the range of over which the electrical double layer interactions become important is also going to go down okay that's the point anyway think a little bit about it um, so that's about uh, what i wanted to speak today so we'll what we'll do in the next class is to look at more general solution 
Okay. Instead of looking at linearized uh, Poisson Boltzmann equation, we will just look at a more general case uh, for a, a symmetric electrolyte and then we will try and look at you know, how does the potential vary with separation distance and then discuss the, again the implications.